So we've got a customer here for scenario two that has an interesting database. And I might try to, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can pull this off. Uh, this is again, kind of like improv. I'm gonna open the mm -hmm. data set in a new view. Um, I'm gonna do MS Microsoft, um, let's see, what do I want? SQL Server Spatial. I'm gonna go through the JDBC side since I'm on a Mac. You could use another thing on a, uh, like uh, you can use the ADO if you're on Windows on or Windows, JDBC, yeah. either one. And what I want to just go here is show that there's a bunch of table, there's one table and a bunch of views, and I think it's inside of DBO, and there's stuff in here. Whoa, there's lots of stuff in our development one, but if I go down here, there's something about wind, wind, wind turbine layout. Yeah. This is the master table, and then there's a bunch of views in here for the different versions. So in the master table, they put like a revision number or something. And so there's view zero through N, and then there's a VC that is, represents the current state of the mm -hmm. wind turbine universe. So I've got a bunch of these. They all, of course, their views are the same original table, so they all have the same schema. And what we want to do is dump it out for our at shapefile friend. We want to make shapefiles of these versions. Okay. Um, and we want to uh, not have to change the workspace if V7 shows up or V8 or V9 or V10. So we need this thing to be dynamic. And, and so to pull that off, um, it's not, it's actually remarkably simple uh, how to do this inside of, of FME. And I want to thank our, actually I didn't mention them at the beginning, but Paul Nailis from the database team helped me to, uh, to get this going. So if I go over to my finder and I, let's see, I got to hop up here to the dynamic one and if I look at the, the, the workspace to read the data, here we go. So this is the entire workspace to pull off this customer's requirement. So again, they want to not have to change this workspace whenever new revisions happen. They want the current version to go to one directory of uh, a shapefile, mm -hmm. and then the, the historical ones to go to a different directory. And mm -hmm. so how did this workspace get made? The key thing was we generated the workspace originally by adding a reader for one table. And then we went into the properties and we said, merge the feature type. And then we used a merge filter to say, match any tables that look like this. These happen to be views, uh -huh. but that's gonna give me the V1 through 2 million and the VC. And so when I do that, all of those, all the data from those tables is gonna come through here. And they all have the same schema. So we don't have a dynamic schema going on. We've got the identical, um, structure. And so now what I'm going to do is just test, does the FME feature type, okay, and I should show that. We also, in this thing, in the format attributes, ex exposed the, the true table name. Yeah. The true table name. And so then in the tester, I'm saying, does the true table name end with underscore VC? If it ends with VC, then that is the current version. And we're going to go to one shape writer, where we can control what directory that's going to go to. And then we're, if it doesn't, we're going to go to a different shape writer that's going to go to a different directory. And then in the shape writer, I'm saying fan out, use as the output file name, the value of FME feature type. And so that's going to give me a shape file named after the table the data came with. And so I'm going to run this. It's always exciting to connect to databases that are far away and I don't know where. And um, oh, Ooh, it finished already. Yeah. And so it turns out there was two features in the current version and 14 in old versions. And um, I can see down here a nice little table that tells me that it wrote a V0 to 6 and a VC. So 16 of them written. And with any luck, actually, I can hit this button here and we can look at the output uh, folder and look at it. It just did it right now. Um, so that's really happy to know. And in the history folder, is um, all of those historical versions. So, no, now the, a new version comes, yeah. I don't have to change a thing, it all works. So what's the key uh, finding here? It's the merge feature types to match dynamically data mm -hmm. that, uh, that's gonna maybe change. The, the feature types are not hard coded in here. And then there's a simple test and then a writer to two different folders where we're again fanning out dynamically by the names. And again, the schemas are not changing. So ahead of time, um, it's possible to, uh, to, to know the user attributes ahead of time. 
So, and I think this one really highlights, um, it's not always what transformer do I use? Sometimes you yes. should be doing more work. Um, there's a lot of features in the readers and writers. So sometimes you don't need hardly any transformers at yes. all to solve a problem. It was a, it's a dynamic. And uh, actually I'll ask the uh, experts in the background to, uh, there's, a, there's a tutorial that Brian and the team over there worked on, on doing dynamic workspaces. And uh, if this is interesting to you, um, I recommend highly looking at that tutorial.